All right, family. I want to talk um, very briefly about Chief Lawn member um, Candace Owens. Talk black to me, somebody. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the phrase, a term that I created years ago, LOM uh, is an acronym for a League of Mammies. Yes, the League of Mammies is a group uh, of Black women that are specifically placed um, in strategic on strategic platforms in order to support white supremacy and to denigrate and to silence and to keep in check and to control Black people. Somebody talk Black to me today. So it's a league of them. That's why I created the phrase, a league of mammy years ago. Now, I don't often refer to Candace Owens in that way as much because she has declared what side she's on. She's with the team that is not secretive about their hate towards black folks and their desire for uh, 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 and their oppressive tendencies. So uh, LAM is really the more covert group of black women that come off as friendly and they mostly tend to be in the Democrat party, but she's certainly a part of the group. But this is what I want you all to understand is that Candace has declared who she is when she hangs out with folks like Ben Shapiro. Talk black to me, somebody. Now, before everybody goes out there and start to cry a river, because my understanding is the breakfast, the breakfast club has had her own recently. Uh, and um, Joe Budden, um, I'm told has, has, has brought her own and stuff. And some of these, uh, black people, or black platforms, for whatever reason, have decided to give her audience as if she espouses certain traits and, and characteristics um, that we don't hear. I think the reason they love her is because she loves white supremacists. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you can say your sister with the curly braids, Vicki Dillard, uh, it, uh, in some sense, I'm, I'm conservative on some other issues and some people might think we're liberal on others. I'm not tethered to a party. Talk black to me, somebody. Did you hear what I said right there? So some of you all have some kind of thing going on in you and with you uh, to promote this woman that loves white supremacy, white supremacy. That's the only thing I can think of because nothing else you do would make sense. But I want to show you this clip. And this is, of course, reserved under the Copyright Act. Um, and I want to just remind you a little bit, not that you could possibly forget, but I want to remind you of who uh, this person is, Candace Owens, and remind you of something uh, that she said her position over the many years. Racism doesn't still exist. We know it still exists. Don't forget this. Neither one of us is saying that racism doesn't still exist. We Can y'all see that? Exists. Yes. Especially against white people. You really want to get into it. <laughs> the, yes. the policies that they're that they're impacting to basically disadvantage people literally because of the color of their skin. Sorry, you're not black, so we don't want you at the school, even though you have a remarkable record. I mean, that is literally right. an institution institutionalized racism. Um, is is what they're doing to Asian Americans at Harvard. Sorry, you're too smart um, and you happen to be Asian and we want black people. Okay, that's your home girl. Please don't ever forget that. Please don't ever forget that family. That's who she is. That's just a little snippet. But now everybody is helping her to, you know, on this, on this PR campaign that she's on. And of course, she's starting to reach out and hang out with black people and stuff because she knew uh, that the powers that shouldn't be was getting ready to oust her, even though she seemed to have indicated on her last broadcast that she was supposed to have been doing something else um, with uh, who she formerly worked with. And let me be clear about who they are. Let me read you a little bit from this. Um, she's connected to Daily Wire. Many of you already know. But I want to read you a little bit of this piece. I don't know if you all can even see this headline. This is so frustrating because I can't see my screen, so I have no idea what you're seeing and what you're not seeing. But this is the headline, if you can see it. This variety piece says, Candace Owens is out at Daily Wire, CEO says, okay? Now, Daily Wire uh, is really a white supremacist organization. They love to attack black people. But Candace was their token because she was their black face. She was their cover. She was their mascot. Somebody say mascot. She was their mascot where they could get away with everything that they felt. I mean, it was more or less a soft blow on them because they had um, this, this, this League of Mammy member, this chief supreme League of Mammy member out front so that they could get away with their anti-blackness. Do you understand? Candace Owens in the white man's world does not exist 
unless she's tethered to them. So when she's out on her own, it don't it don't flow right. You understand her whole existence, the why how she came into all this money and this prominence. One of her big videos that went viral some years ago is the one where she came out telling black folks, you know, um, that uh, we're not victims when it came down to police brutality and stuff. And you all know that she had a history of calling us thugs and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, let me help you understand something real, real quick. Now, she, Candace Owens, that is. Let me read the piece before I jump ahead of myself because I got to hurry. Let me read a little bit of this. So you have the background. Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring wrote in a post on X, formerly Twitter, Friday. He did not elaborate on the circumstances behind the move. Owens joined the Daily Wire in 2021 and hosted a weekday commentary show for the website. Shortly after Boring's announcement, Owens confirmed that she's no longer with the Daily Wire and reposted his statement. Now, Candace came out with her statement on X talking about that the rumors are true. Let me get to it. Let me let me just read you exactly what her tweet uh, tweet, tweet said. Now, this article um is going to tell you what she said, but I had the the uh tw the uh, Twitter the X quote that she made up, but I don't know what's going on with this now. Everybody, please hit that thumbs up button. Thank you so much. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. So I'll just read the quote instead of showing it to you. I really wanted to. Goodness. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Let me just read what it says. Uh, uh, Candace said on X in response to that, she said, the rumors of true, the rumors are true. I am finally free. It says to her over 4.8 million followers on X, she added that there will be many announcements in the weeks to come, posting emoji of the U.S. flag and the cross. Lord, have mercy. Both symbols of bondage when you put them in that context together. She said fans who would like to support her work, support my work, can visit her website and make a donation on her Rev platform. Owen says she will bring back her show on her personal YouTube channel after a brief hiatus. Now, family, when she said that the rumors are true, I'm finally free. Family, what do you mean you're finally free? Girl, what are you talking about? You talking about you being in America, that there's no real uh, uh, anti-black racism, silly girl. What you talking about? You're free, little girl. What are you talking about, La Candace? Candy, La Candy. What are you talking about? You're free. Are you acting like that th th those white people didn't let you go, little girl? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Talk black to me, somebody. Family, this little girl... La Candy is sitting out here acting like these people had her shackled in black box. She's acting like that these white supremacists that she knows she was working for and with. She knows she's one. She told us that this, this didn't exist. Oh God, today. I wouldn't even try to laugh. I wouldn't even try to laugh right there. It just came out automatic. But my thing is, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, family, is because she knew what she was a part of. She said this didn't exist. Now, all of a sudden, the racism talk is, 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 is kind of diminished a little bit, wouldn't you say? What's going on, little girl? Now, I guess the reason why I giggle right there, because you all know I've been talking about Joyless Reed and her destiny to come. I've been talking about uh, Tiffany Cross, who was fired from MSNBC, Angela Rye, who was fired from... CNN, Roland Martin, who's been fired from CNN and other even black uh, networks don't want his funny looking self. I keep giving you all mo recent examples of black faces in high places who tell us, hello, Simone, San Simone Sanders. Simone left uh, uh, working. She, she used to ride with, with Bernie Sanders and stuff. 
Um, and she threw them away and stuff. And she ain't about that life no more. She went with white, supre white supremacist Joe Biden. She felt that he had the chance to win, which he did. She thought that when she came on his campaign that she was fixing to be press secretary. We prophesied her destiny before she even, before he it was official that he won. Girl, they're not fixing to make you the face of America as the spokesperson. You, for, you work for the Broncos. Broncos is your destiny. You are a powerful linebacker. We tell you that, family, because, you know, there's footage of her when Joe Biden was on the campaign where she literally put her life and limb on the line. She physically went across the stage, used her beautiful, voluptuous body to jiggle and to ship shape the planet by messing with the tectonic plates of the earth, thus causing all types of political earthquakes to protect Joe Biden from a non-dairy, non-violent protester and broke a nail doing it. She thought that by physically running out there and tackling this white lady, that she was that was going to be her shoe in to become press secretary. We told her then, look, girl, that wasn't going to do. That was a tryout for the Broncos. That was a tryout. And during your tryouts, we found out during her tryouts that they penalized her for unnecessary roughness. God today. That's what my brothers told me to call it. When I was pointing this out some years ago. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because you black faced Negroes, y'all thought that the white supremacist system was going to hold you down when you vouch for it. See, let me tell you something. There was a such thing. I've said this for years. There was a such thing as an auction block where the auction block was a raised platform where they would bring prospective slaves. Talk black to me, somebody. They were selling the slaves, right? This is how they showcased. This was their Amazon catalog. When they were looking to sell off a slave. And the prospective slave owners was out there in the audience so that they could, just, so they could see them being a, a pranced and modeled up there. But some of you black folks now, instead of the auction block existing, you model for your white supremacists. They don't need to put you on an auction block. You modeling for them now. You showing them what you made of. And what little resource and biscuits, the little resource and biscuits that you require. Everybody hit that thumbs up button, share, share, share. So instead of there being an auction block now, you Negroes have made it into a runway. You do it voluntarily. Everybody hit that thumbs up button, please, and share, share, share. That's what I said because it's real. Been saying it. Auction block don't need to exist for some of you all. You go up there prancing and showing off what you have to offer. Talk black to me, somebody. That's how silly you all are with your buck wild self. Watch this. So I've been calling y'all out because y'all thought that you stood a chance in hell of existing in their worlds for some time. You didn't. You never stood that chance. What did I just say right there? You never stood a chance. You thought you knew Zaddy better than us. You thought you was fixing to have a long career. You thought that they was going to accept you. Y'all have to ask yourself this question. You're listening to Vicki Dillard, who is a, a, a black grassroots independent alternative media, which means that I'm not accepted in legacy media, which means that the revolt people, what they traded with self, which your BET people, your Fox News people, your ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, all those individuals that are considered to be legacy media, not to mention legacy print media and stuff. Those are not doors that they won't open for me. Individuals that are on those legacy platforms have reached out to me and they can't stand me. Talk black to me. So the fact that I use alternative media, they mocked me using my laptop at one time. They mocked me using my cell phone to reach the world. But over time, I see my seeding my message with the Vicky show on multiple platforms over multiple years has taken hold. They're concerned about our effects and us challenging their propaganda, uh, the propagandistic narratives that are nothing but lies and meant to keep you in bondage and to legitimize an illegitimate system. Did you hear what I said right there? I need more thumbs up. There are more people here, even though I can't see y'all. Then there are thumbs up. Everybody, please hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. I got to run, fam, because I have a medical appointment coming up here in a minute. Watch this. 
So family, this is the wild biscuit that went out there and was willing to throw you under the bus. Candace was not concerned to walk in public because she knew no black person would attack her because she knows that we're harmless. Not that I'm telling you to attack her. her. Candace was not careful in her disrespect of us. Candace was very clear and she was consistent. She repeatedly disrespected us, dogged us. But here we see that she's walking on eggshells with these white people and in particular, these religious white people. Now, I want to shout myself out because I had the courage to call out folks like Nick Cannon uh, when he was uh, fighting the uh, members of the ADL who were trying to destroy his career and other members of the Jewish community that came after him. May, uh, he gave some of his money to these folks. He went to their museums and he put their people in their issue over the black Holocaust. He apologized for something that he shouldn't. And they humiliated him, him and they dog walked him and they sent him on a one year tour to apologize. Now, some of you may not know what I'm talking about. Do your own research because I don't have time to pull this up. ADL, y'all see this? I can't tell if you can see this headline or not. I hope you can see it. Some of you may have forgotten. This is from the ADL. It says anti-Semitic and racist black militant group uses Nick Cannon and other celebrity endorsements to promote Million Youth March. That's one instance. That was from 2013, right? This is uh, uh, fast forward almost 10 years later. Y'all see this Hollywood headline? This headline says Nick Cannon impressed the ADL president after a sit down following firing over anti-Semitic comments. It says Anti-Defamation League CEO Jonathan Greenblatt and Viacom CBS president Chris McCarthy both opened up about Cannon's 2020 firing over his anti-Semitic podcast comments and what made them believe he finally had an understanding of the issues. Well, Nick, first he had the courage to hold them accountable because did you all know that Nick created Wild and Out, which he said is a billion dollar company, but Nick didn't even own it. When these white folks came after his career, he told them, okay, he apologized to some of them, but he said, give me my ownership rights. After they did that, they started attacking him and calling him everything but a child of the God goddess. Nick turned around, buck broke himself, apologized for a whole year, sat down with them. Nick gave them a big fat check, went to their museums, and Nick came out. How many of y'all remember Nick came out trying to act like he was getting ready to do something to himself? I won't say the word on here. And Nick intimated that it was, <laughs> excuse me, let me clear my voice. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Nick came out because I was going off on him so hard, more than anybody. I was calling out Nick's weakness for falling to his knees and allowing himself to be buck broken by these people that was lying on him. Nick turned around and blamed black folks, mad because we was calling him out his weakness. Now I stood with him when he came out strong. I stood with him even when he apologized to him at first and at the same time told, he told him to give me my rights to my own creation, my billion dollar creation. He broke five minutes later. Somebody said, y'all remember that? Somebody said, yes, you did. Other people were scared to death to call out them folks. I gave you all a detailed unmatched history of not only reminding you of who the ADL are, are, are but that Simon Wiesenthal Center and the entities that ran it. I showed you all connections that they had even to Arnold Schwarzenegger, how they got money in suspicious ways. I showed you all their suspect connection to the subprime lending crash. Don't play with me, baby. Yes, I did. I showed you their connection on a Schwarzenegger's father's connection to Nazis and how they blackmail even on a Schwarzenegger and how they had the level up in uh, 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 California with resources and some more stuff. I showed you how they even got some of the funding for uh, 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 the Simon Wiesenthal Center and how they're maintained. Somebody say suspect. Only Pamela said you sure did. Some of y'all don't know how deep it is. But Nick gave his money to them. 
to the people that intentionally and knowingly lied on him and a billion dollar creation ninja you don't even own. And when we called out Nick for his weakness after telling him we stood with him, Nick turned around and want to blame us. I won't say who, but I got some call from some high places, some high people in high places that wanted me to stand down from talking about Nick. Oh, yes, they did. I gave him about a three, four, five, six day respite. And when I saw the ninja wasn't turning, I came back hard again. They was mad at me. Folks, y'all, some of y'all was out there saying, Vicky, he might do something to himself. Remember, he sent out that tweet talking about he going to do something to his, a uh, 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 hint, hinting that he going to do something to himself. I said, ninja, please. That was some manipulation. Ain't he running around now having more babies than anybody's rabbits? Ninja, we didn't, we didn't blacklist you, nut. The white religious people under the ADL and those Jewish people, they're the ones that blacklisted you. They're the one that canceled you. As we told you then, we, we're the ones that canceled you. <laughs> Sit your funny looking self down. He's alive and well. That ninja don't have no obituary. That was a manipulation tactic to keep us silent. I wish I would. You was as weak as water, ninja. Why am I bringing that up in this context? Because you all silence and complicity with this group is what causes them to expand and grow and become buck wild and have undue influence and power with us. When you, when you bow the knee to these individuals who you know lying on you, Black folks are not somebody. We're the sweetest, kindest people in the world. There is nobody that's experienced oppression in our manner. Ours was the most damaging. It lasted longer than anybody's. Not 500 years like the one in Germany, but not, not five years like the one in Germany with Hitler, but 500 years. And the world rallied around to make sure that they got reparations, a Marshall Plan, and all kinds of stuff. We have neither received one penny of reparations in any form. And America and its Western powers has neither ceased nor desist our oppression. And moreover, those individuals were directly in, uh, engaged in our enslavement. And then we turn around and, don and put on the, the, the uniform while we were under Jim Crow, while we were lynched. While your dogs bit the breast of our mothers and the private parts of our fathers, we went over there to Germany to free you from Hitler and you turn around and twitch your tail over here in America and call us anti-Semitic. You better bow down. Let me get Beyonce up in here with her song. You know what her song says. Bow down what? Don't put it in the chat. Y'all got a hell of a nerve. Now everybody, including the white liberals, now some of y'all are slowly coming out to admit what we've always been, what I've been saying around this piece. Who else? How many of y'all remember me calling out Jamil Hill? What did Jamil Hill do some years ago? Jamil Hill used that white publication to dog Minister Farrakhan and to dog his legacy and his work for white people. I came out and checked that long member. Angela Rye did a podcast with Charlemagne the God. Dog Minister Farrakhan. Yes, she did. One of the most disrespectful things Angela Rye did before she was fired from CNN. I think it's before she was fired. Might have been around that time. I came out and let her have it. She was defending them folks. She was defending them folks and basically dogging Minister Farrakhan about leaving them people alone, giving them more credit than she was a black man. Where were y'all at when she was doing this? Where were y'all at when Charlemagne the God came out and he was the first one that called Ye a Nazi when Ye was calling out them folks? And did you all know that it was a white Jewish media lady that came out to defend Charlemagne the God after I was one of the main ones to expose Charlemagne's old clip where he was calling out their, their community. That video resurfaced over 10 years, finding out that Charlemagne went in more detail about the control of those folks than even Ye did. And they used Charlemagne was one of the first ones to call him a Nazi. 
Charlemagne was behind the scenes telling other black podcasters, don't bring on Ye and to shut him down. Sean King. Sean King is out here mad because Sean King had multiple millions of people on Instagram. And yes, it's unfortunate. I don't like that Meta got kicked him off. Y'all better hit that thumbs up button. How is it almost a thousand people here and 386 thumbs up? Y'all don't play with me. I'm getting ready to go in a few minutes. I got to run to a doctor's appointment. Y'all hit this thumbs up button, but I had to hit on this topic real quick because I'm not going to go over the river and through these woods with these funny looking lumps. I'm going to give you Vicky Dillard's history of calling out these people. And I'm wanting to know where were y'all when I was doing this and why does everybody seem like they grow in courage now? I'm glad you are. But let's try, quit trying to act like this woman set the precedent. She only in trouble now because she forgot. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I have often said white religious people you don't use your religion to turn around and act like you're a victim. How many black Jewish people are there out there? Judaism is not about a race. How many of y'all know that's the reason why they make, when, when Whippy said that on The View uh, a year or so ago, how many of y'all know they kicked out uh, Whippy from The View a couple of weeks? Because Whippy said that the German Holocaust was not about race. And then some of the Jewish people came on talking about Try to justify why it's kind of like race, though. And how their oppression is precious and different and unlike anybody else's. They're trying to change the definition. Now, let me tell you the secret behind why they kicked off. Kicked that girl, uh, that, that, that bad, you know what out. <laughs> God, today. Candace was happy to be that bad winch. Watch this. Watch this. Candace is still playing nice and using the soft gloves with them folks. Y'all still tiptoeing and whispering about them folks. And I understand to a certain degree and certain things that we got to do. I'm not saying that. But there's a way that you all know we can get together and still back each other, not throw each other under the bus and not use our different platforms to shut each other down. Like Charlemagne did, like Angela Rye did, like Sean King did. Now, Sean King been kicked off of Instagram, Alpha Meta. He has millions of people because he was doing all that footage and stuff for the folks in Gaza. Watch this. Did y'all know that Sean worked with the ADL at one time? Y'all, I said, did you all know that Sean King worked with the ADL? Somebody talk black to me up in this piece. Somebody talk black to me. I said somebody talk black to me. Who's the ADL? The ADL is the Anti-Defamation League. The Anti-Defamation anti League is an organization that's run by uh, 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 the folks in the Jewish community. The ADL, though, are the ones that run around telling the whole world, helping to destroy careers and reputations and character assassinating anybody that calls out the oppression of uh, people that are white people that are in the Jewish community. That's who they are. Look them up, beloved. I said, look them up, beloved. Now, a lot of people coming out talking about the ADL, right? But how many of you all a few months ago watched the Vicky show and supported publicly now what Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam have been going through for multiple, multiple decades when he made this announcement? I hope y'all can see this because my camera doesn't work. I have, I'm looking at a black screen. How many of you all know that right now, Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is in court suing the ADL for what they've been doing to them for decades? Where y'all at? Everybody right now talking about and calling out them folks. But where y'all at in terms of Minister Farrakhan? Everybody hit that thumbs up button, please. I don't know what's going on with this computer. Thumbs up, thumbs up. What does this article say? 
It says Louis Farrakhan sues the Anti-Defamation League for almost $5 billion for claim of anti-Semitism. The Nation of Islam leader claims that the civil rights group is interfering with his First Amendment rights. The article starts, and you all know I've read the direct press conference from the nation before, but I'm reading you from the BAT article. Is this computer plugged? I'm going to make sure it's plugged and it's not falling out. Is it? Okay. Let's make sure the plug over there is, 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 is plugged too. Thank you. It says here, I just heard the noise. I just heard the noise. Okay. Nation of Islam leader, Minister Louis Farrakhan, has filed a $5 billion lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League. Uh, the lawsuit is to ensure that the abuse, misuse, and false use of the term anti-Semite, anti-Semitic, and anti-Semitism as falsely charged by the ADL is permanently barred from being a tool to defame Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam and stifle the exercise of constitutional rights. Why am I bringing that up? Because he notates that in his lawsuit, that they've been using that term to cover for them and to destroy people's careers and organizations. And they've been doing it to them for decades. Now everybody is out here crying a river. I'm trying to see, has Sean cut all his ties with the ADL? That's all I'm trying to see. Sean King now has been kicked off. Sean King has just come to Islam. He's accepted Islam now, not with the nation, but with some other sect, which is fine. But I want to know, has Sean told the world that he used to work with the ADL and that he's cut all the ties? Everybody, please hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. I want to remind you all of something concerning the ADL. The ADL claims to be a goodwill organization. Why is it that your mainstream media folks, your MSNBC folks, all them keep giving voice to this organization, the ADL, who's nothing but an anti-black organization that tries to destroy black people and black folks? Y'all know the history of the ADL? Don't think, I don't want you to think I'm making this up. See, this is how they able to refurbish their, 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 their reputations. I see y'all sending me all this love. Some of y'all don't know this, but I've been teaching about this for a long time now. Some of you new to this. I got to give you context to what's going on. Very little of my conversation is going to be about Candace Owens. All this was knowable, but she was still riding zaddy like she, it was her horse. I love you back. What does it say, family? What's the ADL's history? Like this piece details, this is an old piece from 1993. I've taught about this before. This piece, uh, which is, by the way, family, is from the Los Angeles Times. Y'all know, y'all believe and lean on the white organization, so I have to clip. I got to find clips from them a lot of time to hurry up and just bypass any uh, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? Resistance that you may have to me telling you who these folks really are. Any reticence that you might display. Thank you, brother. My brother Warren with First Work Media in the chat. He's already put the link in there for you. What does it say? New details of extensive ADL spy operations emerge. This article is from decades ago from 93. Inquiry, transcripts reveal, are y'all listening? Nearly 40 years of espionage by a man who infiltrated political organization. Why does MSNBC, CNN use the voice of the ADL as some authority when we found out that these folks were a spy agency for the Israeli government? And guess who were their disproportionate targets when the ADL in its incipiency? It was black political groups. It was others too. But they were targeting your very black political revolutionary leaders. That's why they funny looking selves existed. Why in the hell is legacy media sitting up here giving voice to a spy agency? Now, if you sit up here and talk about some Russia, they'll tell you that you're doing the bidding of a foreign agent. Why is it that APEC, ADL, Simon Wiesenthal and some others are openly running this government and y'all ain't got nothing to say about it? Yes. My time is almost up, family. Thank you, precious. This piece talks about this man named Cal, who was a prominent Jewish, uh, his code name at the prominent Jewish organization was Cal. He was so successful at infiltrating political groups that he was once chosen to head, listen, he was once chosen to head an Arab American delegation that visited Representative Nancy Pelosi in her Washington, D.C. office. 
It talks about how they, uh, how Cal tapped into the phone message system of white Aryan resistance to learn of hate crimes. From police sources, he obtained privileged personal information on at least 1,394 people. He met surreptitiously with agents of the South African government to trade his knowledge for crisp new $100 bills. It goes on to talk about his deep operation, but it says it says here there are these are among the secrets that Bullock and David Guritz, a former uh, Los Angeles based operative, divulged in extensive interviews with police and the FBI in a growing scandal over the nationwide intelligence network oper operated by the anti anti defamation league. Officials of the anti defamation league, while denying any improper activity, have said they will cooperate with the investigation. They refused to discuss Bullock and Guritz. I bet you they did. Transcript of the interviews, among other, among nearly 700 pages of document released to San Francisco prosecutors last week, offer new details of the private spy operation that authorities allege crossed the line into illegal territory. Why are we still sitting up in, the, in this piece talking about somebody's ADL up in this mug? I hope the Nation of Islam, I hope we're, as a trial moves forward, they bring all this out. Now everybody, these white organizations and liberals, all y'all trying to get credit now for trying to act like that you against the Zionist organization. Y'all now trying to stand up for the Palestinian people. Where were you at when this organization was attacking and targeting and spying on black organizations too? Y'all need to be tagging these organizations and asking them why do they allowing this foreign agency, this spy organization with a thick legal and historical record of spying for a government, but they give them audience to influence us. How many of you all know, as I've talked about before, it is the ADL that has been credibly shown among others to have been uh, uh, convinced Congress, both Republican and Democrat, to, to vote, to silence the voice of TikTok. And it ain't got nothing to do with them worried about no China. Do you all know what are those things that, that where all the information is in these big organizations? Um, um, um much of the systems of, of the, the, the uh, TikTok organization was uh 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 um they had to legally let it be run by some folks that are in Texas, I believe it is. That's a trick. TikTok been turned over a lot of their services for censoring to former U.S. intelligence agency that is hired by TikTok. TikTok. Y'all need to understand that TikTok is in trouble with your government and with the ADL because TikTok reaches over 100 and some million people, especially a lot of the youth. And a lot of the youth are not rocking with Israel right now. And it's because of a lot of the TikTok information that's able to go out. So a lot of the crimes against humanity and these genocidal videos that's coming out, a lot of those things go viral on TikTok. So your government is trying to silence that. How many of you all know that that TikTok legislation was sitting up in Congress, I think at least four years? Magically, out of nowhere, it got priority and an overwhelming response from both Democrats and Republicans. They can't even agree to give you health care. They can't even agree to give you any more money in your pockets and build bridges and roads and give good jobs. But family, in a matter of five minutes after the legislation stalled for many years, because nobody considered to be real important, they were able to do it. How many of you all went to my Instagram page to watch the video where I exposed the ADL on MSNBC's Morning Joe last year? Saying that we got a problem with TikTok. You better ask yourself why now they're trying to silence the voice of the masses to these social media platforms. And then they want you to believe that you ought to be worried about your children having access to these platforms. They use it as a trick to get you to jump on to your own censorship, silly. And you don't read through the lines. Plus, we who are in alternative media, we are rivaling. And the average person is now crediting us to be more credible and more people are listening to alternative media. So this is a trick from legacy media. Legacy media pushes this because they're threatened by our influence. So legacy media is going to always be mad at, at, at uh, Twitter and X. They're going to always try to tell you the problem with social media because we are a problem for them too. We got over 1,200 people in the chat and 627 thumbs up, family. How we do that? Everybody hit that thumbs up button and share, 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 and stop hating. By the way, family, I got to run now for real. Look, 
My second spring magazine is officially being shipped out. Those of you that bought the pre-sales a few weeks ago, yours will be starting to ship out this week. Family, it's regular mail. The mail people be tripping, but we keep our word. We have your addresses. They're going to be shipped out. Some of yours might take longer, but just know they're going to be, they're, be, they're already being shipped out as of today. So be expecting them over the next upcoming days, okay? Y'all, this is the love and money issue. It is so beautiful, y'all. I am so excited, y'all. Look. Let me stop. Let me stop. Ladies, we're talking about love and money. Brothers, get this for the lovely lady in your life. We did the pre-sales. I was able to work out a deal with the printers. So we got a, a handful more left uh, because you all know this is only my second one. It's been doing so well. So if you want to get yours today, go to my website. The link should be at the top. Go to vickiplanet.com. It is so beautiful. I'm teaching the divine feminine manifestation secrets. I redefine luxury because luxury should not just be enjoyed by the ultra rich. Luxury should be enjoyed by the everyday woman. Talk black to me, somebody. Plus, I'm talking about yummy manifestation tips. And during this season of our lives, we're being more intentional about manifesting yummy, sacred love and yummy, sacred money. And we don't limit how the resources come. Talk black to me, somebody. Somebody just said that's fabulous. Thank you, precious. So be sure to go to the website. The link should be above. You can join my mystery school for $45 a month before it goes up there. And at the same website, you can get this because I was able to work out something with the printers. We still got a handful of others left. Um, so be sure to get yours today, okay? I am so excited. Watch this. Let me get back to this quickly before I have to go. For real, for real. You all know, and this, watch this. You all know how America likes to whitewash its history. They like to sit there and tell you that Minister Farrakhan, for example, they lied on Minister Farrakhan. They tried to say that he was, he, he was loving, history, uh, loving Hitler and that he was giving all kind of uh, uh, accolades to him, right? Remember, they said the same thing about Candace Owens' funny looking self. Well, what they don't tell you, y'all know I had to pull up the old historical piece from BBC News. What does this headline say? What does this headline say, family? I don't know what is going on with this computer. Family, I'm going to have to come back and do part two of this, okay? Because I'm having technical issues. This is my second time starting this. Virgil said, I'm waiting on third mystery school lesson. Yes. Well, I've already gave you a bonus, Virgil, for that one. And we're doing the next one in the upcoming days. So you're right. I've already given even, I've given double since I've been there. Plus, you all have access to some of my previous lectures. So you're very, very blessed. And you get discounts on products that the average person doesn't. And we got a whole bunch of other yummy stuff. And you have access to an exclusive community for those that choose to participate. So the Vicky Diller Mystery School is absolutely amazing. So I have more than three mystery school lectures that I've been given double, even though I only supposed to do one a month plus some other stuff. Talk black to me. Look, Lisa said, you okay? Thank you, precious. Watch this. BBC News. What does this headline say? JFK diary calls Hitler the stuff of legends. I want y'all to remind them folks that whenever they try to sit up there and tell somebody something, ask them what did this former president of the United States mean when he said this back in the day. Kennedy then uh, predicted, 28 predicted that Hitler would emerge from the hatred that, that surrounds him now as one of the most significant figures who ever lived. Quote, he had in him the stuff that le which legends are made of. He continued. Kennedy wrote the entry in the summer of 1945, after touring the German dictator's Bavarian mountain retreat. More receipts. I hope y'all can see his diaries there. Okay, y'all say y'all can see it. Okay, great. The original copy would be auctioned for the first time on April 26th in Boston uh, by longtime owner uh, Deidre Henderson, who worked as a research assistant for Kennedy while he was a U.S. senator with, the, um, with White House ambitions. They keep this kind of stuff secret from y'all. I'm just giving y'all some little juicy tidbits. Virgil, your $50 gift is blessed a thousandfold. Thank you, precious. He gave Mr. Henderson the diary in order to inform her of his views on foreign policy and national security. In the description of the auction she wrote, when JFK said that Hitler had in him the stuff which, which legends are made of, he was speaking to the mystery surrounding him, not the evil he demonstrated to the world. Now, do you see how they parse stuff when white folks say it? White folks who are president, look how they parse their words to give them understanding. <coughs> Excuse me. 
on stuff that he said about Hitler. But they want to come after other folks. Let me tell y'all something real quick. Because I was going to show you some clips with Candace Owens when she had this interview with this um, rabbi who was dogging her. Let me do that real quick, family. I really got to go. I'm already running behind. Which, to be honest, we really shouldn't be giving Candace. You know, we're trying to act like this, this woman is doing something that's breakthrough. We're just exposing the fact that some of you Negroes are getting your wake up calls and you always going to be made a fool of. Now, let me tell you something. Black folks are the sweetest, kindest people. We're the most religious, spiritual people on the planet. Stop trying to use Ju uh, uh, Judaism, your religion, as if it's just yours. There are black Jewish people. What about them? If we talk about the black Jewish people that's in Israel, how many of you all know the black Ethiopians and some of the black Hebrews that's there that said that their government in Israel forced them to have hysterectomies or it forced them to engage in, in, in um, uh, restricting them being able to have children and babies? How many of you all know that there was a policy that was going on over there in Israel against their black residents, their black uh, citizens over there? How many of you all know that they was trying to deport some of the black Israelites those that are legitimately supposed to be in that country and have legitimate legal status. I talked about that on one of the other platforms. Y'all stop playing and quit acting like we're not dealing with white supremacy. Let me tell you something. We don't even need to talk about y'all's religion, but you all keep bringing up your religion because you want to use it as a cover. We just call it out white supremacy, no matter what form and what label it's under. And that's why you're mad. The problem y'all have with Candace is that even though she's a mascot, Tom, your gift is blessed a thousandfold. Tom said, tell it and stay on it, Vicky. Listen, y'all mad at Candace, even though she's a mascot. She, she serves as a form of AI for white supremacy. Y'all like, what are you talking about? Let me tell you what I'm talking about because I just came up with that today. Candace is a form of AI. Some of y'all, even though we know what she stands for, Lisa, your gift is blessed a thousand fold, my long-term supporter. Y'all know that Candace is full of you know what? But like with AI, you can trick people. So by hearing this black looking woman, by hearing this black looking woman talk about and criticize the Jewish community, a black looking woman who always dogs black people, she was made a mammy in the white supremacist house only to attack black folks. Y'all white people, the, the three or four y'all that's defending her, you all are trying to say they getting her just because she's attacking the Jews as if it's separate from y'all. No, say, keep, keep, <coughs> keep talking about the white supremacist element of it. She's the only one of that group that's been cut off. Now, some of y'all gonna say that's because she's the only one that's come out like that. There's other of y'all's allies that have been very strong, but you all have tried to destroy this girl, which we don't care nothing about because when you act like an enemy to black folks, you get what you get. But we're still making the prep, the uh, important point that Candace serves as AI, white supremacist AI. So even though she's a white supremacist at heart, a handful of people might still look at her and, and subconsciously the blackness, her black melanated skin is still given a level of legitimacy to her criticism. Even though she's a full-fledged raccoon. She's nothing but the help. But because she also serves as AI for white supremacy. That white supremacy's AI mascot glitches and it hits your subconscious. And even though she's a wild thing on the other side, when it comes down to disrespect the black folks, there's still her blackness that still can trick the system. That causes a glitch in the system, which still gives a level of authenticity and legitimacy more than it would to anybody else. How many of y'all remember that clip that some of these platforms censored when that when they first started the genocide? How many of y'all know I showed you that clip of that famous singer in Israel, the Israeli white man singer named, uh, 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 what is it, Victor, uh, Victor something or another, I think his name was. I forget what it is. He's a famous singer out there. I paid you the clip. Go to my old Instagram clips. Even Instagram tried to censor me on that. 
when the war came out, they were trying to pump up the IDF, the Israeli defense forces, the, the soldiers, so they could go out and commit genocide against the Palestinians. And the way they, they pumped them up was to give them this uh, uh, a concert of this white Israeli. Y'all remember me playing y'all that clip? I played it here too, didn't I? Ellie said, I remember. What did he say? When he came out, the Israeli singer said, as he was entertaining the Israeli soldiers to get them pumped up to go commit genocide, he said, Gaza, you black woman. Gaza, you huge whore. Gaza, you trash. In the mind of the white supremacist, your black matriarchal mother is your enemy. And he subconsciously said it. They considered the ultimate enemy. The way they characterized their ultimate enemy, Gaza, to destroy them was first to a black woman and then turned around and called her a huge whore. I'm bringing that up because even though Candace is a mascot, there's something about that black melanin matriarch that goes back to a prophetic and a spiritual essence that triggers them. They want to keep that quiet. Sabrina, your $50 gift is blessed a thousandfold. Love you, Seer, Sybil, Miss Vicky Dillon. Oh, they ain't ready to hear that, beloved. Thank you, precious. I've had several people on multiple platforms use spiritual terms to describe me. They ain't ready for you saying that, precious. But you see some. Your gift is blessed a thousandfold. She says, $50. Love you, Sears, Sybil, Miss Vicki Dillard. Watch this. Some of y'all don't understand the spiritual significance of this. And some of you Negroes out there may even try to turn it into a gender war, but you don't understand the spirituality of the divine feminine. And why is it that in the middle of war, toward the beginning of this genocide against Gaza, the ultimate enemy, the ultimate disrespectful word and image that this white supremacist could conjure up in Israel by an Israeli singer is calling Gaza a black woman and then calling her, her, her a huge whore and then calling her a trash. It's spiritual too. Let me tell you something. I gotta go family. I apologize for having to start the broadcast over for technical issues. I still can't see anybody, but I'm told y'all can see me. I wanted to play you clips from Candace Owens. Inshallah, I will do a little bit of that at another time this week. Y'all be sure to, uh, to share this, but this is important. Everything I shared with you today. Candace still gave these ridiculous people that accused her of things that she actually didn't do. They changed up the definition of anti-Semitic. They don't care that black folks are the one that had endured the longest Holocaust ever and the most damning Holocaust. The greatest crime of humanity happened to us, but they want you to still bow the knee. I want you all to understand that this false charge of anti-Semitism has been something that they've lodged on multiple black people for many, many years. And I want you all to know that your silence or your participation in it is the reason why it persists. And I want you to know that it's not just local. I want you to know, like the Israeli consul, the former Israeli consul in recent years that said in a meeting where she was recorded that the problem with Israel are black American youth and the fact that some of the maneuvers have been credibly, that, that, that our police have used to destroy and, and, and to unalive and to injure black folks in America have been credibly traced to uh, members of the Mossad or members of Israel's forces that are being trained by, that, that train our police. Gee, your gift is blessed a thousandfold. I'm trying to get you to see that there is an interconnection with what's going on in the world around us. And that our ancestral government, our unseen government, is using the Candace Owenses of the world. They're using the happenings around the world to expose. And for me, not only do I talk about multiple issues that happen on the continent of Africa, if you see my geopolitical breakdown, like our African Diaspora News Channel here and other places, watch this. I want you to understand that the individuals that I'm talking about now have a connection to what's happening on multiple 
in multiple nations around the world. That's why this is important to highlight and talk about also. Fam, if I didn't have a medical appointment, I would not stop in the middle of this. If I did not have some of the technical issues today, I would not have this interruption. But thank you all for tuning in. Please stay tuned. You all know that they don't send uh, your cash out. Uh, Adio is blessed a thousandfold. Y'all know they don't send out the notifications like they should. So always be tuned in. Ladies, gentlemen, everybody get your Spring Venus um, magazine edition. I told you that I was happy that the publish the printers were able to hook me up. So we've got some extras that we can sell to some of you all that were not able to get in during the pre-sale. Now get it while you can, because we did really good on sales for the pre-sales. Go to vickiplanet.com. Join my school, my mastermind school for only $45 a month. I got to run. Stay tuned for part two. Join my email list at vickiplanet.com. I can't wait to see you again.